Hello everyone. In this session, we'll talk about preventing exceptions from leaving destructors. Exceptions provides a way for your program to react to exceptional circumstances such as a runtime error. They do that by transferring the control to a special portion of the code called exception handler. Destructors, like any other part of the code, they may throw exceptions. However, you need to be very careful um, that the exceptions thrown by destructors are contained inside the destructors. They should not be thrown out of the destructors. To understand why, let's look at some e simple example. We have a class dog, and dog has a constructor and a destructor. Each one of them will print out some message so we know they are executed. Dog also have a, a method called bark. In the, in the main function, um, we create two dogs, dog1 Henry, dog2 Bob. And before Henry and Bob can bark a little, exception of 20 is thrown out. The exception of 20 will be caught by the catch block. Now, what will be the output of this uh, simple program? The output is Henry is born. Henry is born first because Henry is created first. Then Bob is born. Bob is destroyed. Why Bob is destroyed first? Because Henry and Bob are stored on stack. Stack is last in, first out. Because Bob is born last, it will be destroyed first. And then Henry is destroyed, and 20 is caught. The main point that I want to make with this example is, before the exception of 20 is caught by the catch block, the stack will unwind, and all the local variables inside the try block needs to be destroyed. So both Bob and Henry will be destroyed before 20 is caught. Now having that in mind, let me remove the throw statement. Now there will be no exceptions in the main function. However, I'll add a throw exception in the docs destructor. Let's see what happens when an exception is thrown out of a destructor. The result is a disaster. This program will crash. So what happened? When the execution reaches the end of the try block, the stack will unwind and all the local variables need to be destroyed. So Bob will be destroyed first. When Bob's destructor executes, it throws an exception of 20. As we've learned from previous experiment, before the exception of 20 is caught by the catch block, Henry also needs to be destroyed. And Henry's destructor also executes and also throws an exception. So as a result, We'll have two exceptions pending at the same time, one from Bob, one from Henry. And C++ doesn't like having more than one exception pending at the same time, so it will just crash. This is why we should not throw an exception out of a destructor. So what's our solution? Our solution number one is the destructor swallows whatever the exceptions that it generates. In this example, I put all the exception prone code inside a try block and catch the exception that I expect. You could also add another catch statement with ellipsis. This will prevent any other unknown exception from leaking out of the destructor. However, you need to be very careful about this kind of catch statement 
because uh, first of all it's not very useful it doesn't give you any error message and secondly sometimes it's even dangerous because this kind of statement will mask off any kind of exception the downside of this solution is since the exception is swollen by the destructor the dog's client will not get the exception so they will not know what has happened and do appropriate thing to handle that this leads us to our second solution which is move the exception prone code to a different function not in the destructor so the destructor will contain code that is either exception free or having very little chance of throwing exception for example in our docs example I'll remove the exception thrown code uh, in the destructor and add another function called prepare to destruct and in this function I'll do a bunch of different things and it may throw exceptions now the destructor is exception free and in the main function before doc1 and doc2 gets destroyed they need to call the prepare to destroy function now first of all this program will no longer crash and secondly the dog's client will get the exception and uh, do appropriate thing to handle the exception the downside of this solution is there are, is one uh, additional API for dog's client to call so which solution should we use solution number one destructor swallow the exception or solution number two move the exception prone code to a different function the answer depends on who is the better person to handle the exception if it is a dog use solution number one if it is dog's client use solution number two that's all for today's session bye bye